forecasting optimization and simulation so forecasting in the words of alan la forecasting is a systematic attempt to probe the future by inference from known facts simply forecasting is the prediction of future values forecasting is a technique of making predictions of the directions of future trends based on analysis of past and present data simply forecasting ennu parnale past and present data is used to predict future values predict cheyundana forecasting ennu parayunathu and forecasting is a decision making tool that helps business to cope up with the impact of uncertainty and also it's a planning tool that helps business to chart next moves it's also used in predictive analytics so or a forecasting example but yanagil forecasting number of hourly or daily customers at a bank or a restaurant or any other service provider can help in staff decisions inventory management planning service decisions and etc and also managers require good forecast of future events to make good decisions uh, then for uh, examples of forecast uh, another examples of forecast are forecast of interest rate sales forecast are needed to plan production and the workforce capacity next we will look into the features of forecasting first feature is it involves future events so as forecasting is the prediction of future values based on past and present data it involves the future events and second it is based on past and present events and third it uses the forecasting techniques fourth its element of guesswork guesswork as we are guessing what will happen in the future it's in uh, fifth one is inference from known facts and sixth one is necessary for planning and decision making process next what are the importance of forecasting forecasting allows business to set reasonable and measurable goals also essential for planning and helps to take informed business decisions and also it's helpful in the development of business helps to anticipate change and also helps to prepare budget next we are looking into what are the techniques of forecasting there are mainly two techniques of forecasting quantitative and qualitative techniques so first we are looking into qualitative forecasting qualitative forecasting are subjective and they are based on the opinion or judgment of experts they rely on experience and intuition and they are useful for taking intermediate and long range decisions they are necessary when historical data is unavailable or when decision makers need to forecast for into future it's also known as judgmental technique so here in qualitative forecasting we are giving more importance to opinion uh, it is based on the opinion or judgment of the experts for example when a person forecasts the result or outcome of a cricket match that is uh, an example of qualitative method because they are uh, forecast on the basis of their opinions or personal interest then the methods of qualitative forecasting there are mainly two methods of qualitative forecasting first one is research market research and second one is delphi method market research it's a process of collecting data through correspondence with market community in depth and elaborate market research it includes polls and surveys next one is that next one is delphi method rand corporation has developed the delphi method initially in 1969 to forecast the military events it means it's a panel of experts are polled on their opinions on a particular issue then the predictions made by them are analyzed and based on that unbiased prediction is shared next one is quantitative forecasting quantitative forecasting is objective in nature it forecasts future data based on historical data it ignores the opinions from experts important methods of quantitative forecasting are time series method and next one is casual or associative method so here we are discussing the most important quantitative technique first one is uh, in time series method there are another classification moving average exponential smoothing uh, econometric approach indicator approach etc and also in casual method linear regression can be used first one is time series method it's a stream of historical data time series forecasting uses information regarding historical values and associated patterns to predict future activity it is a short range forecasting method 
uh, in that time series method it includes moving averages it's a simplest technique uh, it is a smoothing method based on the idea of averaging random fluctuations in the time series to identify the underlying direction in which time series is changing it's also useful for short range forecasting uh, so the time series a moving average method assumes that the future observations will be similar to the recent past and also why moving average is used that it enables the easy identification of the upward trend or downward trend and also enables quick decision making next is exponential smoothing simple exponential smoothing model records only the previous forecast and current time series value it is highly highly suitable for environments such as inventory system and it's also useful for short range forecasting and in exponential smoothing the recent observations are given relatively more weight in forecasting than the older observation next one is casual method it assumes that the variable going to be forecast is associated with other variable of the event it's also known as associative method in this there are several types of technique uh, one of them are linear regression in linear regression it involves finding a linear relationship between the independent and dependent variables and the measures of forecasting accuracy there are several methods uh, measures of forecasting accuracy first one is mean forecast error means absolute deviation mean absolute percentage error and mean squared error and tracking signal these methods are used for checking the uh, for, uh, accuracy of forecasting this is all about forecasting next we are discussing about optimization optimization can be defined as the best possible outcome with the best use of resources optimization is the process of selecting values of decision variable that minimize or maximize some quantity of interest it's also known as mathematical programming and it's a family of tools designed to solve managerial problems in which decision maker must allocate scarce resources among com competing activities to uh, optimize a measurable goal and it's also an important tool for prescriptive analytics it is extensively used in finance supply chain marketing and other disciplines then types of optimization there are mainly two types of optimization first one is linear optimization and second one is non linear optimization the linear optimization method is a method to achieve the best outcomes in a mathematical model whose requirements are represented by linear relationship linear optimization is often called linear programming or lp it's a fundamental prescriptive analytics method the most important feature of lp is the presence of linearity of the problem it is used in all type of organization uh such as uh, advertising investment dis investment distribution production refinery process and transportation analysis what are the components of linear optimization first one is decision variables they are unknown variables that a model seeks to determine so uh, it include the uh, determine and it include uh the quantities of different products to produce or the amount of money spent on research and development projects the amount to ship from a amount of amount to ship from a warehouse to a customer and next one is an objective function it's a quantity to seek to minimize or maximize is called objective function means for my profit to maximize cheya allengil cost to minimize cheya nu pariya allengil profit to revenue maximize cheya nu pariya that is obj objective function next one is constraints constraints are the limitations requirements or other restrictions imposed on any solutions any 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 set of values of the decision variables that satisfy all the constraints is called a feasible solution and set of all feasible solution is called a feasible region next what are the steps for formulating linear programming first identify and define decision variables then define the objective function next identify and express mathematically all of the relevant constraints next one is non linear optimization in many optimization models the objective and or the constraints are non linear functions of the decision variables such an optimization model is called non linear programming model non linear optimization is again divided into convex and non convex problem so these are about optimization and next one is simulation 
Simulation means it's an appearance of reality. It is the imitation of something real or a process. Imitation of real world system mathematically. Simulation example at the bar. Now we have a class. We have a group of students. Group either can either cellar by a per market type number consider number classroom or a market type consider the theater. Cellar can number buyers in a role assigned the outcome and angle cellar sellers in a role assigned the outcome. Angan number of exchange conduct a young angle, it's a simulation. Number of real world system in a imitating a simulation in the very another. Simulation is the process of designing a mathematical or logical model of a real system and then concluding computer based experiments. With the model to describe, explain, and predict the behavior of the real system. It is often used to conduct the what is analysis on the model of the actual system. It is a very popular DSS technique, decision support system technique, for conducting experiments with a computer on a comprehensive model of the system to assess its dynamic behavior. It is consistently ranked as the most useful, powerful of powerful mathematical modeling approach. Then characteristics of simulation. It imitates reality and captures its richness, richness both in shape and behavior. It is a technique for conducting experiments. It is descriptive, not normative tool, often to solve complex systems or problems. Simulation should be used only when a numerical optimization is not possible. Next, advantages of simulation. Simulations are relatively straightforward and it is highly flexible and it can include real complexities of problem. It enables time compression and so also new policies, operating procedures, information flows can, uh, can be explored without disrupting ongoing operations of the real system. And so also can handle wide varieties of problem types. Disadvantages of simulation. It cannot guarantee an optimum solu optimal solution. It is time demanding and expensive. It cannot transfer solutions and inference to solve other problems. And the software requires special skill and experience. And the simulation results are difficult to interpret. Simulation methodologies. So the development steps of simulation are first one to define the problem and next construct the model then test and validate that model next design experiments and conducting experiments then evaluate results and implement solution these are the steps for uh, development of simulation next some applications of simulation are in manufacturing that helps in scheduling and inventory and semiconductor manufacturing uh, construction engineering and project management Military application, business process simulation, staffing personnel uh, like servicing operations in fast food restaurants, supermarkets, etc. Financial applications, marketing applications, distribution and logistics, healthcare, and public policy. Public policy means in criminal justice systems also we can use the simulation techniques. Next, there are different types of simulations. So, uh, the among them are most important among this are Monte, Monte Carlo simulation. So it is invented in late 1940s by Stainslow Ulla. Monte Carlo simulation is the process of generating random values for uncertain inputs in a model, computing the output variables of interest and repeating this process for many trials to understand the distribution of the output results. It's a mathematical approach that allows considering the impact of risk during decision making process. For Monte Carlo simulation, we have random values generate for uncertain inputs in a model. In the output variables of interest compute, we repeat the process. It's a main important simulation technique. And Next references, Business Analytics Methods, Models and Decisions by James R. Evans, Business Intelligence, Analytics and Data Science, a Managerial Perspective by Ramesh Shraddha, Dusan Talan and Ifrain Turban. Next, uh, Corporate Finance Institute, uh, in its Essentials of Business Analytics, an Introduction to Methodology and its Applications, International Series in Operations and Research and Management Science.